Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, I'm going to show you another simple game mechanic, and that game mechanic is a false floor. False floors are used in a number of games, but mostly platformers. And this is similar to the ghost platform, but the ghost platform gives the player a couple seconds to get off the platform before it disappears. This one immediately falls as soon as the player touches it. And here's another example from the game Stumble Guys. Now first off, I'd like to demonstrate this game mechanic. So here I have my ball and our platforms, and if I roll down this platform and go this way, down at the bottom of this ramp are some false floor platforms. Now right now I have these platforms showing the path for debugging purposes, but when I publish this game, they'll just be one color. And then when the players touch the platforms, they'll turn into either green platforms or red platforms. The green platforms don't move, but the red platforms do. Now to get started, we'll want to begin with a 3D cube, so I'll click the plus sign in the hierarchy, go down to 3D objects and select cube. I've then renamed this object to false floor. Now with this cube object, I've stretched it out in the X and Z directions so that it's more of a platform instead of a cube. For a false floor object, we'll want to create a new material. So here I have a new material, which I've called false floor. You can use the standard Unity material, but since I'm using the universal render pipeline, I'm using my Colored Near Camera Fade Shader. I've then set the color to yellow for its neutral color. Once you have this material created, you can then drag it into the mesh render component of your cube. Now this object should already have a box collider attached to it, but we'll need to add a rigid body. So you can click the Add Component, then go to Physics and select Rigid Body. Lastly, we need to create a new script for this object, which I've called False Floor. And we can go ahead and open it up. Now inside the script, we're not including anything new up at the top, but I've added this script to my InfoGamer namespace, which you don't have to do. So the first thing that you actually have to do is add some variables to our class. The first variable is a bool, which I've called isFaults. The second is a renderer, which I've called myRend. The next is a serialized field, which is of type False Floor. And this is an array which I've called group. We then need a variable of type rigid body, which I've called my RB. And lastly, we need a serialized field of type bool, which I've called reveal path. Once we have these variables created, we then want to create the onEnable function. And inside this function, we need to initialize some of our variables. So I have my rend equals git component, and we're setting it to our renderer. And the second is my RB, and we're setting it equal to git component, and we're looking for a rigid body. We then have our start function where we'll set up our path. The first thing that we want to do inside the start function is add an if statement where we're checking to see if our group.length is equal to zero. If it is, then we want to return. This will allow us to set the elements of the group array for just one of the platforms inside each group, and that platform will be the platform to decide which platforms in the group are good or false. So after we return, we then want to pick which platform in the group is going to be the true platform. For this, I've created a local variable of type int called path index. And we're setting it equal to random.range, we're passing in a 0 for the first parameter, and then group.length for the second. We can then create a for loop to traverse our group array, so I have for int i equals 0, i is less than group.length, and inside this for loop we want to create an if statement where we're checking to see if path.index is equal to i. We're then going to skip the line inside this if statement for now and create an else statement. After which we need to create two public functions. The first is a public void function called setPath. Inside this function we're setting our isFaults variable equal to false. We then want to set our rigid body to kinematic, so I have my rb.isKinematic and I'm setting it equal to true. This will make it so that the platform doesn't move if the ball rolls over top of it. And finally we want to create an if statement where we're checking to see if reveal path is equal to true. If it is, then we want to set the color of our platform so that it's green. So I have my myren.material.setColor. And for this first parameter, I'm passing in the identifying string for the color value of my custom shader. Then for the second parameter, I'm passing in color.green. For the second function, we have a public void function, which I've called setFaultsPath. And inside this function, we want to set isFaults equal to true. We then want to make sure that the ridge body is not kinematic. So I have my rb.isKinematic equals false. We can then copy the if statement from our first function, paste it in here, but then change the second parameter to color.red. Once we have these two functions, we can then go back up to our if and else statements, and inside the if statement, we're going to add group index i.setPath, 
And for the else statement, we're going to add group index i dot set false path. Now the last thing that we need to do is handle the interaction between the ball and the platform when they collide. For this, I've added the onCollisionEnter function. This is a special function that is called when two physics objects have their colliders touch. Inside this function, we have an if statement where we're checking to see if collision.transform.tag equals player. And if we want to, we can replace this with a serialized variable. Then inside this if statement, we want to add another if statement where we're checking to see if is false equals true. If it does, then we want to set the color of our platform to red. And so we can copy this line of code from our set false path function, and we'll just paste it in here. And then for the else statement, we want to set the color of our platform to green. So we'll copy this line of code from our set path function, and we'll paste it in here. Once you've done all this, we can then save the script and we'll go back to Unity. Now inside Unity, we'll select our false floor object and we'll attach our false floor script. If you created a variable for the player's tag, you can then set it to player or whatever you're using for the player's tag. Then at this point, we'll want to create a prefab out of our false floor object. And so we can select it from the hierarchy and drag it into the project window. At this point, you'll want to build your false floor area. And so here I have a three by 12 grid of false floor prefabs. And you can do this by just dragging in your false floor prefab from your project scene to your hierarchy or duplicating the one that you already have in your scene. Once you have your false floor area laid out, you then need to initialize the group array. And so I've just selected one platform in each row and set the group array to be all three platforms in that row. And so this first platform has itself and the two other platforms on each side in its group array. This will make it so that this middle platform will determine which of these three platforms is true and the others will be false. Now a word of advice is that you keep the group small enough so that there's always at least one clear path to get to the other side. And so if my false floor area is wider than three prefabs, then you might want to divide each row into two sets of groups. For my game, I've determined that the ball can jump over at least one space. And so if this platform were true, and then this platform were true, and this platform were true, then the ball could at least go from here to here or from here to here. And once you've gone through all the rows and you've set up the groups, you can select all your false floor prefabs and determine whether you want the path to be revealed at the start or not. Like I've said, for the purpose of debugging my game, I've enabled the reveal path variable. But once I go to publish my game, I'll probably disable this option. Now at this point, we can go ahead and test our project out. So once again, here I have my ball and the ramps. If I roll down, Here I have my platforms, and I'm going to go on the green and jump to the other green. Ooh, oh no! If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.